All right, well, so here we are in the summer, and that can only mean one thing. Well, actually, it only means two <laughs> things. Uh, the first thing, which I almost forgot about, is that it gets kind of hot here in California, starting around now. I mean, today's a balmy 99 degrees, which is nice. Last week, it was 112 oh, nice. here in Chico. <laughs> lovely. It's just yeah. lovely. I mean, the summer here in Northern California is great <laughs> if, you like, if you like being in air conditioning yeah. a lot. But the most important thing... Arizona are saying, whatever. <laughs> 100, yeah, they had 121 <laughs> yeah. the other day, yeah. I think. <laughs> Crazy. All right. But the most important thing, really, all kidding aside, that you got to know about the summer is that it kicks off dimensional metrology season. The key event, of course, is the Coordinate Metrology Society Conference, uh, the CMSA. This year's conference, starting in less than three weeks now, is taking place at the striking Cliff Lodge in Snowbird, Utah, not far from Park City. The Coordinate Metrology Society is a gathering place for users, service providers, and manufacturers of close tolerance, large volume, and portable 3D measurement technology. This includes inspection software, CMM, theodolites, laser projection systems, laser trackers, photogrammetry, scanners, articulated arms, and targets, to name Everything. just a few. A lot of stuff there. If you're in, in 3D portable metrology, you'll want to check that out. Well, the CMSC is a long-term Quality Digest partner, and we are of them as well. And Dirk and I will be reporting from the show next month. As always, there's sure to be a lot of interesting activity, including cutting-edge white paper presentations, personnel certification assessments, and an action-packed measurement and education zone right on the exhibit hall floor. In the middle of everything this year is going to be the Accordant Metrology Society's executive chairperson, Keith Bevan. In addition to his role within the CMSC, Keith is also the interim group leader for training at the National Physical Laboratory in the United Kingdom. He joins us now via Skype for this month's CMSC Corner. Hello, Keith. Hello, Mike. Hi, Dirk. How are you doing? All right. How are you, Keith? Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, apologies for that long intro, but we'll, we'll get right into it now. Uh, the CMSA, it's a special event. We all know that Dirk and I have been there many, many uh, years. Uh, and you've been on the executive committee of the Coordinate Metrology Society for a few years, and you've been a familiar face of the conference for a lot of years uh, in addition to that. So what would you say really kind of sets apart the CMSC from other technical conferences? Um, I think there's such a variety of, of things that people can do. I mean, you mentioned a great long list there in, in your introduction of, of all the different equipment, the people, and, and so on. But um, when you get the variation in the types of technical presentations, when you get um, a variety of things to do, you can you can learn such a lot. You can go back to fundamentals. You can learn very, very technical details. So it gives you a lot of uh, benefits. And, and I believe that um, a lot of the delegates that go, can go back with them um, and, and sort of brag that they've come back and there's a return on the investment from their business to say, hey, I've, I've come back and learned a lot and can apply it back in the workplace. Well, you know, you, you've done a, a, a lot of great work on a, a personal level to bring the measurement zone and education mm -hmm. zone to key areas of the CMSC conference, uh, to bring those to the forefront of the conference. So what can we expect in the zones at CMSC 2017? Well, this this year it's uh, slightly different. Um, as always, we don't like to repeat each time, uh, but we've got uh, three specific areas in the in the measurement zone. Um, we're going to be looking quite a bit at uh, scanning, also looking at articulated arms, and doing like in, in a lot of cases a lot of comparisons. So, for example, looking at optical CMM versus articulated arm. So there's going to be some nice little tests and techniques for people to do. Plus, we'll be back with the competition, um, looking at photogrammetry and, and, and lasers as well, laser tra trackers. So there is a lot to do in the measurement zone. Um, in the education zone, um, we've got the Jeopardy back again that we did before the competition. We've got certification workshop on, on laser scanning. We've got... Um, the iPads doing the e-learning, that type of scenario. So there's there's lots and lots that's going to be going on uh, for people to go away and learn. So Keith, your background is in training. I, I know knowledge transfer is something that's near and dear to you as a metrology mm -hmm. professional. So how do the metrology, I'm sorry, the measurement zone and the education zone, uh, and really kind of the entire conference really, help those in industry learn and advance in their careers? So what we've tried to do is to introduce uh, all the, the core fundamental things that people need to know uh, to be able to make a career out of metrology. Um, so 
what are the fundamental bits you require, the core skills you need, how you can make step changes, how you can be given the right behaviors, how you can apply things like geometrical tolerance in using different types of measuring tools. You're taking people on a journey and setting them up for what I believe is a career for life. So um, it's fundamentally trying to give people this skill set um, and make a massive difference back in industry and, and get out there and shout about metrology, how important it is to us all. And you know, further to that, I mean, the next generation of metrology professionals, of course, it's a, it's a critical mission for the Court of Metrology Society. Uh, so how are you encouraging, I mean, first, STEM education, science, technology, engineering, and math. And second, how do you connect those that are entering the workforce with those in the industry that have metrology jobs to fill? So um, one of the things that has been worked on quite a lot um, across the world, really, but especially here in the UK, is there's a link between industry and with what their needs and requirements are for the for the future. So we're sort of there's an introduction to apprenticeship schemes, uh, professional recognition, so that you can actually develop this pathway right from school. So you need to come in with a, obviously English and maths and then be able to move forward and then start to apply it through an apprenticeship scheme. Um, and that also then gives people different options. Not everybody has the capability to go off to university and do a degree. They are really could be really good at getting on with their hands, using metrology equipment and making a massive difference. So there's a whole pathway that is, that is a, a reappearing in some instances and appearing as fresh uh, in a different way. And industry is driving it. It's not academia that's driving it. Industry is driving it because it's, their, it's for their needs. Hey, hey, Keith, I mean, it's kind of to follow up on that, just... Your perspective, uh, you're in the UK, but you've been in the United States uh, uh, quite often. Um, in the United States, apprenticeship programs a long time ago, that used to be, like, I'm sure like they, they were or are in the UK, kind of a, a normal path. I mean, you know, you would, if you were interested in something, you'd get an apprenticeship program for it, and eventually you'd, you'd graduate from that. And then apprenticeship programs kind of died off in the United States. I mean, the idea of an apprenticeship in, you know, whatever, uh, except for a, a few, very few cases, mm -hmm. kind of went away and now it's making a resurgence. Has that been the pattern in the UK as well or has the UK always had a strong apprenticeship uh, uh, pathway? It's been exactly the same. Um, there has been a, a, this a sort of group of, uh, and I don't want to talk about the age, but there's an age group where the apprenticeship schemes are few and far between. Certain organizations kept apprenticeships going, but others didn't. And so there is such a, a focus now to bring that back, but to try and not make it generalized, but to make it focused. So although it's coming back in a big way, um, it's coming back in a very focused way, but it was exactly the same here, Dirk, exactly the same. Interesting. Well, thanks, Keith Bevan. Uh, good conversation with you, as always. We'll see you at CMSC uh, in just a few weeks uh, there in Utah. Again, it's, it's www.cmsc.org for anyone out there interested in checking out the CMSC. Uh, still a little bit of time to come to the conference if you're interested, so check that one out. Uh, Keith, we're going to see you there uh, in a couple of weeks, so thanks for joining us. Thank you. I'm going to do a bit of space and gravity now. <laughs> oh, he's got my pint at hand. All Cheers. Right. Cheers. Well, it's 7 o'clock. Seven, it's almost 7.30 there, That's so right. why not? All right, Keith. You can do that. We'll, Thank we'll you, guys. In the evening, not in the morning, we should That's say right. so. All right. All right. So long. Bye.